Hello Reactor Enthusiasts. In this video, we'll have a look into the uh, underlying numerical model of the WWER1000 reactor simulator. So this will be more like a numerical theoretical video rather than the operational video of, about operating the reactor. So if we look at this manual, or actually there is a manual within this document, but this is the Material for Training Courses and Workshops WWER Reactor Simulator, which you can download from uh, the International Atomic Energy Agency website. If you don't find it, uh, you can ask in the comments, I will put the link. Okay, let's go to the numerical model part. And here it is, the point 2.1 mathematical model of core neutron kinetics. So I will not go deeply into all of this, but I will just highlight the most interesting part. Um, I already highlighted in the Adobe with a highlighter. Okay, so we see that the, it considers that the major contribution to the power release is from these fissile materials, uranium-235, 238, and plutonium-239 and 241. As we know, the only feasible material mm, available in the fuel before starting the chain reaction is uranium-235, which is the one in which the uranium is enriched in, in natural, natural state. We have a uranium-235 content of, of 0.7% and to be used in uh, modern PWR reactors like the one we are dealing with now, we need a concentration of between 3 and 5. Usually we'll see the most enriched uh, fuel assemblies in the simulator are at 4.4. And then we have the 238, which is a fer fertile material. It means by itself it's not feasible, but when it captures a neutron it can become a feasible material. And then we have the plutonium 239 and 241, which do not exist in the fuel before the foiling procedures, but is, created, is creating by bombing this um, fertile materials by neutrons created by the initial fusions of uranium-235. So it's considered that the main energy comes from these four elements. Then, about the discretization of this numerical model. We have that we are in a finite difference model, so even if you may think about finite element, this is not a finite element model, it's a finite difference model, and this makes sense because uh, we don't need to model complicated geometries or we don't have a changing shape like a solid deformation, elasticity, plasticity problem. This is a reactor problem in which we just need nodes with uh, given properties, neutron flux, etc. So this is very convenient to be modeled using a finite difference model. And here it says uh, the average neutron flux density is calculated in a 163 by 10 knot spaci spatial mesh. So this is in the cross section of the reactor we have 163 foil assemblies. One knot is placed in one of each center of these foil assemblies and then the longitudinal, longitudinal, sorry, longitudinal dimension of the reactor is discretized in 10 knots. So we have a total of 1,630 knots in this uh, finite uh, difference model. This is not a really fine model, it's not a very refined model. Mm, if we think, if you have ever seen a foil assembly, it's composed by many little pipes of zirconium with a mm, with the foil pellets inside. All this is assembled in a given geometry. In the case of this reactor, it's a hexagonal geometry. And in the center of this uh, bundle, we may have, or not, a rod uh, which, or a um, pipe or a lining that um, allows the control rods to, to go inside. So as you see, each foil assembly is already very complicated by itself. It would need a numerical model just to compute what the uh, chain reaction and neutron um, interaction within the fuel rod, but we are just homogenizing this and using a single material point for each one of these fuel elements. Even if it, this is not a very fine 
or refined simulation, it can be fine if we have data from a real reactor. So if we make this model in which we have a material point in the center of each uh, element assembly and we have 10 points along the length of this reactor and uh, we have coefficients that we calibrate using data coming from a real reactor, from a real operation, this can be very, very close to reality and this is totally fine for a simulator that is used for operation of the reactor. But if what we want, imagine you are in the 70s when this reactor was designed, or 60s, end of the 60s, 70s, and you really want to um, design this reactor, know what will be the heat production and everything, this model will be very limited. This model, um, from my point of view, is operation oriented, it's not design oriented. Okay, let's continue looking at the features. Okay, this is fine, I will... Absorption is also influenced by xenon and samarium poisoning of the reactor. That's very interesting, i not a nuclear physicist, so I was always talking about xenon, but now I see that there is another element, samarium, that it's also a poison. So I will, I will try to read about this later. Okay, this is the kind of scheme that we use for the resolution of each time step. It's a very numerical thing, I will not go into in depth. And this I find it very interesting, but I cannot talk about it. Energy entrained by antineutrinos and energy released by diffusion product products with very long half-life, more than three years, is not considered in this model. Okay, this antineutrino stuff, it looks like it's really science fiction. It looks like really theoretical quantum physics. It, okay, but they mentioned that it's not taken into account, so it seems this is a real thing that creates heat, but not in a manner that it could be very relevant, maybe, for the total output of the reactor, but definitely I will read about this later. And then, this is relevant for what I want to tell to you in this video. Um, it's, um, talking about velocities of moderation, absorption, and the radioactive capture, respectively, are estimated with the Getera code. Getera, I don't know what this code, and I don't have time to go in depth into what Getera is. So, if I'm not wrong, as far as I saw in the equations written in this document, boiling of water in the primary is not considered. So, here, water in the primary is always in liquid state. I don't know if this getera could take into account boiling of water in the primary, even if this, this is not a boiling water reactor. We know if we surpass the boiling point, we could have some little bubbles of, of steam, and this could dramatically change the reactivity because steam doesn't moderate like what liquid water does. And I'm not sure what Getera does, but I would guess that boiling is not considered in this model, nor in the equations I see in this document, nor in the Getera code. And I will show you in a demonstration how this is, or how we don't see this boiling behavior in the simulator. So we have this uh, normal operation, and if we go into the 3D display reserve before boiling, we have this reserve, we are at 20 degrees of boiling, mainly in the central inner core here. So now I will try to, to reach a boiling point here and see what happens. If the model takes into account boiling in the primary, at the moment you reach boiling, the reactivity should decrease a lot because it would be like in a boiling reactor when you start boiling and the reactivity decreases a lot because the bubbles don't moderate neutrons. So first of all I will probably insert group 10. Yeah, let's do this. Or, or maybe select group 6 which is the area which is closest to boiling, it's the one I want to potentiate. And... Mm -hmm. mm, no, let's just insert rods. Yeah, because it's already totally 
outside the reactor the group 6 so I can do nothing else to increase reactivity here just insert the group 10 and keep inserting following the normal sequence sorry I was withdrawing and I almost created an alarm because I was close to 100.2 of nominal power so I will insert group 10 when I'm when the power is decreased to around 80% I will increase power using boron boron decrease and then we'll see how close we are to boiling ok we are already at 90% I will disconnect the boron exchange model and I will set boron shim to auto and I will keep inserting rod group number 10 this will automatically shim boron in this case decrease to compensate for reactivity loss to keep power at 90% I will stop here and check for the boiling margin and now we're at 25 because overall I decreased power so that's why there is more reserve but I will continue inserting group 10 and we see boron decreasing not very fast though Actually, I think I can see the reserve before boiling here. Now this is still displays 25. I think I will change the group and go to some group of rows that is mostly in the outer layer. Not sure yet. Let's select this rod here and DT33 it may be the reserve before boiling so let's continue inserting rod group number 10 And now it's starting to drag the group 9 in this 20% overlapping in the main sequence. Group 10 at 0, totally inserted. manually decrease boron now to set the power at 100 percent I'm back to auto but it decreased a bit to 99 let's have a look here we are still far from boiling maybe group 10 is not the best group to be withdrawn to be inserted for this purpose I should choose a group in the surroundings 
Yes, the group 9 would be much better. Let's continue with the group 9. We are fine now. And I will go to look the 3D plot. Let's check if this number is really the same value. 21.29. 27 here. This is not the reserve before boiling. Now I'm not sure. Neither this is. What happens here? There is some alarm. Just the level in the pressurizer. That's fine. Let's continue. Okay, to accelerate the process, I will I just thought about that. I will do a pressurizer, open this valve here. Open this valve here. This will create a spray. Hopefully, that will condense steam here and it will decrease power in the reactor. It seems it's working. So this we will reach the boiling faster like this. Bottom concentration lower than seven. And we start to have the shape I was looking for, with a reserve before boiling of 15 degrees in this central area. Let's continue. We see with a colorful pattern the red inner core. And we are drawing the group 8. Group 9 totally inserted, we're inserting group 8. Let's have a look. We're 12 degrees in this very central foil assembly. We can continue. Let's have a look into the pressurizer. I will just connect these pumps to pump. Oh, sorry, these are not pumps. No, that's fine, I don't need the uh, water is already entering this way. And I will set into manual, otherwise it's not injecting water. Okay, we see the four heaters just turn on. We have the reactor decreasing pressure and I will just disconnect this security in case the pressure goes below 150. I will continue inserting the rod group 8.
Once we are almost at boiling point, I will disconnect the automatic shim of the bottom exchange because I want to see if when we reach the boiling, the reactivity goes down very quickly. If that occur, it means the model takes into account boiling, but I cannot really advance to you that this will not happen because this model doesn't account for boiling in the primary circuit. Time to look at the 3D plot and we are at 9 degrees of boiling. And we can see this here. This is the reserve before boiling. 8.7. Yes, exactly. So it's the central rod, the most dangerous now. now. We are at 7 degrees of boiling. And the problem I'm thinking about now is that I wanted to withdraw group 6 to increase activity in the central inner part of the reactor, but the group 6 is already totally withdrawn. So once we reach boiling point and I stop the boron shim, I'm not sure what to do to, to prove my point. We are at 5 degrees of boiling. I think what I will do is to insert group 6 a bit so we'll, I will have some available reactivity Yes, I will go to group 6 now insert it slightly Well, we will get a bit away from the boiling. Yes, exactly, it's increasing now. But I will. I just want the 20% of available reactivity from this group. Reactor or primary pressure is decreasing still. That's good for the purpose of this video. Okay, we're at 80% in the group 6, that's totally fine, and I will continue with the group, inserting group 7. And we have 4.5 degrees of boiling. Three point four degrees. Three point one. Maybe when we add one degree, I will switch to withdraw group six. Will it be enough with twenty percent, twenty percent of the length of group six? Not sure. Let's have a look into the 3D plot. Okay, that looks good to me. Pressure in the reactor decreasing. That's good. 
the spray it's spraying water I will just increase a bit the spray discharge to reduce further the pressure in the reactor now we have the blinking in the pressure because it starts to be low but this is what I want let's see if there is some ok, I will connect this, but for sure we don't go that low and uh, I think there are no more alarms for pressure ok, let's continue inserting group 7 and we are at 2.6 degrees of boiling and I'm starting to drag the group 6 so I will continue with another group I think I will continue with the group 3 yes, I think this will give us a lot of available reactivity sorry, this group 6, group 3 yes, this is fast this makes a fast decrease of remaining temperature before boiling we're at 2 degrees one point six one point five we are almost at boiling point temperature in the primary it's 301 1.3 degrees to boiling one point one and now I'll stop inserting rods decrease a bit further on just to get a bit closer to zero let's see what is alarm okay okay and now I will connect back the boron change 1c model and I will withdraw group 6 or maybe group 5 group 5 is very likely to increase reactivity in the center so let's try with group 5 oh, group 5 is already totally I cannot it's totally up, so group 6 and let's have a look into reactivity at the same time as we look at the neutron and I will use some other group to compensate for the increase yes, group 3 in auto and I will keep withdrawing group 6 and we see the reserve before boiling is 0.4 I will have a look into the 3D plot so it's almost boiling in this point 
Let's continue with drawing group 6. The reactor is below 150. 150 bar. Zero point three. It seems really hard to reach zero. Let's have a look back to the three D plot and uh, what I'm suspecting here is that this is a zero because as you see we have a really flat area here that probably in reality will be something like that I'm not sure this is physically realistic let's continue a bit more zero point one And it seems that is not it doesn't want to insert extract anymore. Probably had some yeah of course. Let's disconnect the securities to finish this exercise. That's fine. It doesn't let me. <laughs> Okay, this protection Please, can I know? Yes, I can withdraw And now we got zero degrees of margin, so we are boiling now And let's look at the reactivity What happens in the turbine? Turbine is totally fine we have the reactivity around zero and I just surpassed the set point that's not good let's connect the boron shim into auto quickly just to go back to normal power The, the power is too high even if I surpass the set point it's okay because I disconnected all the securities but it's at 107% of the nominal power so let's uh, insert some group of rods maybe group C why not and let's set the reactor at 95% or 98 and I need to disconnect the automatic control and disconnect the boron chain That's perfect, we are 99.3 And let's have a look into the 3D plot We see a totally flat area here, so This is a boiling area So all the center of the reactor is boiling I really cannot just say that the model doesn't take into account boiling Looking at these results, because it could be It starts boiling very softly creating very small bubbles and these just keep the power in this region at these values but 
let's do another thing, let's look at the relative power well or the absolute power, we have an absolute power of 43.36 I will write this down now 43.38 now and now I will increase power in the central group, so the group 6 Let's withdraw group 6 Disconnect automatic Well... I got too much power again So let's insert group 3 until we get below 100 Le Then let's set group 3 into auto and then withdraw group 6 ok we are at 100, I set automatic control in group road group 3 I go to see the 3D plot and we are at 43.7 so I will write this down, 43.7 for the maximum point which is the central fuel assembly we go to withdraw group 6 And it seems the automatic control cannot cope with this, it's just increasing when I uh, withdraw group 6. Maybe the available reactivity of group 3 is not enough to compensate for the group 6 this uh, withdrawal because group 6 has many roads. So I will insert back the group 6 and I will take group 5 and try with the group 5 which is totally out, so I'm not sure I will be able to prove anything but according to this shape I would say that the model does not include uh, boiling equations for boiling because we have the reserve before boiling here, totally flat in all this area, look there is like 8 fuel assembly, assemblies across and we have the power output in which we have this peak I'm thinking that if the reserve before boiling is the same everywhere here I expect to have a power output also flat here and if we have this peak I really cannot tell because it could be interpolation error because using finite differences it could be that we do have a higher power output in the central node and this video is inconclusive I cannot give a response to my initial hypothesis saying that this model was lacking boiling equations in the primary I have the in intuition that it doesn't include because this model is not supposed to reach boiling in operation conditions and this model is not made to simulate accidents but I cannot confirm, not negate so this is the end of this video I'm sorry about the not conclusive results see you in the next video, bye